Today, we are on a quest to catch the fish that got away while keeping an eye on an impending thunderstorm. Several weeks ago, while trolling for Spanish mackerel, I hooked three king mackerel, but all got off due to cutting the line or bending the hooks. Today, we are in the Grady White on the hunt for those king mackerel, and my plan is to troll using a combination of diving plugs and buster rigs. On the two rides on the stern, I have a Rapala Magnum and a Man Stretch 25, and on the outriggers, I have duster rigs baited with dead cigar minnows. There's a pretty strong system forecasted to come through later today, so my plan is to head offshore and work my way back as the day progresses. I began at a buoy line, where I have had good success before, and then trolled over an artificial reef site. With no luck at either site and with the wind starting to pick up, I decided to head back closer to shore. Okay, so what I'm doing, I've moved over closer to the shore. Um, I wasn't able to get any kings offshore, so last time I hooked into some of them, you know, I was closer to the shore. So this is just the shore that leads into the uh, mouth of the bay, which is right there. So I'm going to make a right turn as I as I get around it and kind of stay on this side of the bay, which is where I hooked into them before. So see if um, if that doesn't work. But since we're in a little shallow shallower water, I need to switch uh, my diving plugs. I'm going to go to this Rapala X Wrap. Um, it's not going to dive quite as deep, and um, I'm still going to use my outriggers using the uh, cigar minnow on those dusters. got a little bit different color on this side. You know, Spanish mackerel are, are likely to be around here too, so that's the other reason I want to switch to these smaller profile diving plugs, because um, it, it could attract some Spanish mackerel as well. All right, and now we wait. All right, I believe we're on over here. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. All right, a nice Spanish. Well, that's a nice Spanish, y'all. Look at this one. That's a nice Spanish mackerel. All right. Well, I was right. I was hoping, hoping these uh, smaller plugs might pick up a Spanish. That's a nice Spanish mackerel. We'll get a measurement on him in a second. Alright, do believe we got one over here, y'all. Oh, we got two. Alright. Obviously got into a little school here. Yep, see the other one jumping back there. These are nice ones. Nice ones. you in a second. Well, these are nice Spanish mackerel. Oh, we got off. That's a bummer. How in the world does that fish get off? 
after all that. Well, I might have torn it now. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna stop the boat for a second. We got a lot going on here. Let me get this up. I think what I'm gonna do, since I'm catching some nice Spanish, I was in the middle of hooking up one of these uh, Clark spoon rigs, but it was all tangled and I was dealing with that when I got this fish. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull in this King mackerel line and kind of just go to these Clark spoon rigs and these um, X wraps and uh, just kind of go for some Spanish because these are some nice Spanish. I hate I lost that other one, but uh, nonetheless, we got the wind pushing us away from the shore here. So that'll, I'm just gonna kind of drift here for a few minutes and kind of get all this set up and, and go for it again. But he's a nice Spanish right there, y'all. That other mackerel was 20 inches. Let's see what this one roughly is. a little over 18. What I like to do is bleed the Spanish mackerel. I just get that knife up in there in the gills and then cut right through there. And uh, you'll have a nicer taste in filet that way. All right, well, let's get all this stuff rigged up and get out there. All right, help out again, y'all. <laughs> Look at these guys come on up. Doing some little fish skiing over here. Well, no, he decided to go down. There he is. All right. These Rapala X wraps are doing great. So far out fishing the dark spoon. <laughs> Doesn't seem like a big fish. Yeah, I got something, maybe. I don't know, let's just kind of see. Oh, here he comes. Oh man. He may be one of the bigger ones. He didn't. Wow. He was kind of swimming at us, I guess. The good old Spanish mackerel bleeding everywhere. There he comes. Okay. Well, I thought we were all tangled up with everything for a second. All right. A little bit smaller, but I think he'll be a keeper. Well, this weather's starting to pick up, or just the wind at least. We still got a good couple hours, but definitely kind of keeping watch of it. Yeah, and I don't want to pull them too hard because I think some of those ones that have gotten off, you know, have just been tearing their mouth more than anything, just with the boat movement and then this heavier gear. Oh, he's a nice one. Nice one. I don't know if you can tell, but we're in a little bit shallower water. It's kind of greenish, and then you can see where it gets deeper, where it gets dark. Not sure if that's showing up, but I'm getting a little closer into the, you know, 10 foot depth range, closer to that rise. Um, seems to be where, you know, I'm kind of starting to get these fish recently. So, trying to kind of stay in that spot. But, trying to work the steering wheel, the rods, by yourself trolling is a little tricky. Yeah, I definitely want to take it easy with these guys. This is a 
pretty hefty rod right here. Had it for the king mackerel, but you know, started catching these Spanish mackerel. But just kind of take it easy, and I think you're less likely to lose them and tear them out. All right. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and head on back to the house. This storm's getting a little bit closer and it's getting windy. And we've got a good number of Spanish mackerel, so we're gonna head on back and we'll see you at the house. So back at the house, as you can probably hear from the rain on the pole barn, we got some rain coming through. We made it in just in time for that thunderstorm came through. But uh, nonetheless, we're at home. We got some pretty nice Spanish mackerel here on the table. So we're gonna get those cleaned up. And then tonight we're gonna make some mackerel fingers like to show you how we do it. But first, let's get these fish cleaned. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clean these Spanish mackerel, basically, clean Spanish mackerel like most fish. Um, you want to be real careful. Their backbone is um, kind of soft, so it's easy to be, if you're not careful, to cut through that backbone when you're making this first little slit. And then you can just kind of go straight down the top of the backbone, kind of like in, you're cleaning a speckled trout. You don't have to worry about the rib bones um, like you do bigger fish like redfish and things like that. So once you get that off, go ahead and just cut this little bit of rib area off like that then you're ready to go ahead and get the fillet off the skin what i like to do is get your fillet as close to the edge of the board as you can and you want to be careful spanish mackerel's skin are kind of thin so it's easy to make a mistake and cut through the skin but what i do make sure that's tight and flat to the table then i just follow with my left hand inching it up behind the knife just to keep that fillet nice and you know steady on the table and and this the skin tight that's the main thing you don't want it to start buckling it up on you as you're moving along so then you've got your fillet now there's two things you want to get out you you want to get out this bloodline and at the same time there's some bones right here you're going to want to get out but the best way to do that is basically just cut out this bloodline and you're going to cut out the bloodline as well as the bones on the opposite side at the same time and just follow just either side of the bloodline just to make that get that little sliver out now you're left with some pretty thin fillets um, this is why we like to make these mackerel fingers we fry them for these bigger ones you're going to want to go ahead and cut them in half because that'll make a nice uh, piece of fish to fry for some of these smaller ones, you might leave them as one, one half of a fillet. So that's basically all you do with that. And then basically just do the other same thing to the other side. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these clean and then we'll see you in the kitchen. Okay, so we're going to make our mackerel fingers. We like to do our Spanish mackerel this way because of the, you know, the way that I clean it, um, it leaves um, two slender type fillets but uh, those are good size for frying. Now, once you fry it, you could do several things with it. You could just eat it on its own as fried fish, or you could make some po'boys, go out and get you some French bread, um, use some tartar sauce, get some uh, tomatoes, lettuce, pickles, whatever you wanna put on it, and you could put that fish on a, on a uh, piece of French bread. You can make some tacos out of it. Um, you know, just whatever you want. We're just gonna eat it kind of plain tonight, but our first step, you know, we're gonna go ahead and get our oil heating up. And what I like to use is a cast iron pot. You know, you could use um, one of those types that has the thermostat on it, and that makes it kind of nice because you can kind of dial it in um, to exactly what temperature you want. But I just use this candy thermometer um, to keep to regulate the heat or to keep track of it. 
but I do like this cast iron because it, it holds the heat. Um, it heats evenly um, and, it's, and it's kind of slow to cool down. So we're gonna go ahead and get this lit. So we got the oil heating up. I like to get it up to 375. That seems to be a good temperature to fry this fish. So while that's heating up, let's go ahead and get our fish ready and our tartar sauce made with the help of my son, Steven. Okay, so we're gonna make our tartar sauce. This is just uh, some, some ingredients that you probably have around the house. We just kind of came up with this um, recipe over the years and we really like this um, version. <laughs> <laughs> but what I start out with, you can use sour cream, you cannot use sour cream. I like to use a little bit of it, um, not a whole lot. It gives it a little bit of a tang to it. Um, but mostly you're going to be using mayonnaise. Okay. About like that. A little bit more uh, mayonnaise than sour cream. And then our next ingredient is going to be horseradish. You know, horseradish can be quite strong, so you want to kind of take it easy. But that's probably going to be about a quarter uh, part to the rest of what you have already and then our next ingredient is just going to be some dill relish so something about like that there again that's probably about another quarter of, of, of a part and then lastly um, is some just regular uh, mustard if we had brown mustard spicy brown mustard I'd probably use that but this is just what we have on hand um, but this is not going to be a lot. Um, mustard goes a long way, so probably just about that much. And that'll be good, and we'll just set this aside till we're ready. So we have this fish, and it's been marinated in buttermilk for about 30 minutes. But what we're going to use as far as our seasoning, we like this uh, Louisiana brand, and we like the um, seasoned crispy. There's different um, versions of this, but we like this. Um, mainly because its first ingredient is cornmeal, so it's going to have that more crisp um, texture to it. And then basically all you need to do, you're just going to batter your fish like, like you would any fish, um, shaking a, you know, as much of that buttermilk off as you can. Um, only do you know, two or three of these at a time. Um, it, it makes it a lot easier that way. And just kind of toss it around. And then you can just transfer it to another bowl. If you look real closely, you see how this batter is kind of starting to clump up. That means I had my fish too wet. So just shaking this off was not good enough. So what I'm going to do with these others, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of, kind of soak up some of that buttermilk a little bit and you won't get all that clumping. Now see, look at this. This is a little more even coating. That's really what you're looking for. See, that looks a lot better. That's, that's exactly what you're looking for. And you may have to um, add to um, some of your seasoning. If it starts to get clumped, um, you want that fresh powdery type um, batter or coating is gonna work a lot better. All right, so let's check our oil. I think we're ready to put our fish in. All right, so we're exactly at 375. So I think I've got 14 of these pieces. So I'm gonna put seven in. And you've probably seen this when you're, when you're putting anything in grease like this, if you push it away from you and it does splash, um, you know, it's less likely to get on you. I think that was five. And that's probably going to be enough. You don't want to you don't want to crowd it too much. And then this usually goes about three, maybe four minutes. One thing I like to do right when I get that fish in is kind of make sure they're separated and they haven't stuck together as you put them in. So those are looking good. What you're really looking for, um, more than the time, is when that fish starts to rise to the top and you get a lot less uh, bubbling it'll kind of, the bubbles will kind of slacken down a little bit. And that, that lets you know you're, you're, you're on your way to being done. Now Daddy has to be careful, why? It's hot. So these are ready. It ended up being a little over four minutes. Um, this was a good, good amount of fish. 
to put in there, but that's looking good. You see how the bubbles are not as furious as they were before, and the fish is, you know, really floating at the top really nice. Got that nice, good golden brown. So that looks really good. And that's all there is to it. Steven, what do you think of the fish? How's it look? Good. It looks good. Can you say it loud so everybody can hear? How's it look? Good. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up. If you like this video, found it entertaining or learned something along the way, I would certainly appreciate it if you give me a like. And if you find yourself watching my videos, I would certainly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It really lets YouTube know we're starting to build something over here. And uh, you know, lets me know I'm putting content out there that people are enjoying. So until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.